and uh, we you know got to be um, you know commending um, ourselves that we're we're winning in that area we're doing really well <clears throat> and even um I share I think I might have shared this with uh, our location leaders or exec team about our attendance over the last um, over uh, when we've come back to the room our in the room attendance has been really strong like our return to the room numbers uh, between 80 and 90 percent of what they were um, pre-lockdown uh, pre-isolation which is just outstanding um, when we look at that across the life of and the landscape of churches in our country um, that, that are allowed together um, that's just outstanding which does speak to the power of the systems which I've talked, I talked about before um, and our faithfulness to continue to apply that and just work what works because we know that sometimes you don't get an immediate you know um, reward or immediate return on a phone call or a text message but over time it builds and it builds community and what we've seen is it's continued to build community through isolation and now when we are able to get back together it is very simple, easy. There's less anxiety. There's less concerns and worry about what it's going to be like to be with each other again because we've worked so hard to build community. So that that attendance across you know those across every um, location, like even you know like online's going crazy. We're seeing new people connect online. Um, you know, Scone here. You've got new fam like families back in the room again on Sunday is outstanding. Um, Cessnock the same. You know, we're seeing um, a good return to the room there. Uh, and Tuesday night, like our Tuesday night is phenomenal. And, and that also speaks to the power of teams. And we're winning when it comes to teams as well. You know, our Tuesday night service has been predominantly team in attendance, which is like what, this is what we predicted post-COVID. We kind of said, well, you know, you probably won't necessarily be in church because it's an obligation, because you feel like you have to be. You'll be there because you want to contribute. You want to be part of something. You're probably not even going to come just as an attendee, uh, but that's okay. We, we love that culture that you're here because there's something for you to participate in. There's something for you to bring. There's something for you to contribute. And we talked about just inviting everyone who's eligible to serve, to be in the room. And so Tuesday nights are basically that. Like in our pre-service on a Tuesday night, we only see a handful of more people actually come to the service to be a part of the service. It's all team, which I think is a massive, massive win. So the Tuesday night team and the team leaders, uh, you know, and Kate for assessment location and Sam, they should be commended for doing that, for gathering and building team. And the, the team's grown. The Tuesday night team's grown exceptionally well. And I, you know, just congratulated Amy on that a couple of weeks ago. You know, she's been uh, instrumental in gathering um, people uh, and if, you, if it's a winning team, it's a fun team, people like to come back. So if you're a team leader, like Amy's been running in hospitality, if she was horrible and, you know, un uninspirational, um, people wouldn't come back to spend time with her and hang out with her. So, um, you know, she's been doing a great job. The same for youth. Like youth is stronger in term three than, you know, I just think, I know in, in terms of attendance, like we were having like 70s and something pre-COVID, but, um, you know, we, we, but we, through the middle of COVID, we, we had zero attendance. Like we couldn't get anyone to anything. We had to do Zoom and that's just painful for kids. But um, post COVID and now that we can get kids back together again, to have the number of kids that we've got back in the room and have the proportion of those kids serving, you know, so there's like, I think Sam said there might have been 16 young people serving on team plus the team, like the six adults that are on team, you know, for the last Friday night, plus the kids in attendance. That just speaks of health, like so much health, that there's that many kids that want to, you know, contribute. They want to be a part of it. They're not just there to turn up and attend. They're there to actually be involved. You know, the level of contribution I get, like it's not the same as the level of contribution you might necessarily see for, you know, teams on a Sunday morning or, you know, whatever. But they're still, you know, they still feel that they're formed. They're still turning up to the meeting. They're still in the environment. They're in the culture. Um, they're being encouraged. They're being inspired. And I just think that's outstanding. So I think we're winning in youth teams and Tuesday night. Scone is the same and online is the same. You know, all the stories of these teams just winning in every area. Um, and new team members online as well. Like we've got new team members again in the room on, uh, to, on uh, tonight. We've got two new team members that haven't been in the room uh, for Monday night online and they'll be in the room tonight. And so, it's, I mean, the fact that that's growing, I mean, we have to just stop. And like Rachel shared about having someone say yes to Jesus uh, yesterday morning, we do have to just stop and we have to pause and we just have to be like, wow, things are actually um, moving forward here. The kingdom of God continues to move forward. We continue to see God doing things um, in and through our lives. And it's a big, and we have taken a massive step up in growth during this season. And the same thing with academy. Like I know academy enrollments are looking good for term four um, because we've, you know, we've made a decision to, 
have free drama lessons for term four. But, you know, we didn't have to do that. But as a, a whole organisation, we, we, we got creative about how to re-engage with people post-COVID and said, well, look, we'll just take the hit. We'll just make the investment because we're all about reaching people. We want to bless these families, bless the community, we want to build community. This is a way we know we can do it. So let's go for it. And so, you know, Natalie and Rach, they crunched the numbers and they said, look, let's just do it. Let's go for it. And so we're seeing the fruit of that with people wanting to be involved in, you know, what's happening at Beyond Church and even all the new projects that are happening. So we've got, you know, the, the um, playground at the Cessnock location is underway with the walls being painted, that, that moving forward and having to kind of um, deal with all the holdups and stuff because of COVID and then, you know, the, the normal trades people kind of tensions that you have to manage. Um, that's all, you know, all happening and moving forward. And even all the stuff that's happening behind the scenes that we don't vi um, visually see, like Rebecca's work on um, a new daycare centre for, for the Upper Hunter. I mean, that is a significant amount of work that's continuing to move things forward. So, so what I'm, why, why am I saying this? I'm saying this because we are, as a church, as an organisation, we're actually positioned in an extraordinary place to continue to move forward into a, an, a new season of growth as a church. You know, what, where we are now is on a platform um, of, of strength that is, you know, it, is, it really is unprecedented. You know, we've talked about COVID being unprecedented, but the, the strength of the church, the local church in our context is unprecedented and we have to we have to pause we have to say wow there's something happening here that where a lot of organizations have really struggled um, we are probably stronger than we've ever been um, in terms of the growth of individuals the growth of the life of the church um, the way that teams are moving forward the way that we continue to reach new people seeing people say yes to jesus join community i mean this is all stuff that is um, not as common as you might think during this season so why do I say all that? Because we are positioned for the next thing. But remember I talked about, I said this is lifting restrictions, our next step. So what is the next step for Beyond Church? Well, I, I know that um, the next step is that we have to get ready for the next step, that we have to make room in our leadership journey for what's next. And that's going to be the big ask. The actual practicalities of what next like what specifically is going to happen I don't know and I don't think it matters so much because what I'm more interested in is I'm more interested in us as leaders positioning ourselves um, in the um, in the will of God so that when God calls on his people to move they're ready to move when God calls on his people to lead they're ready to lead when God calls on his people to move into the next thing he's got for them they're ready to go so what I want us to do is I want us to make sure um, that we that we coincide the the lifting of the COVID restrictions with the lifting of the restrictions that we might be placing on our own lives. Um, I want us to get ready for the next step for our own lives as leaders. And um, you know, we're not positioned the way we are for us to just maintain the status quo and to be in maintenance mode. That's not the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God continues to move forward, continues to grow. Um, and the, the challenge with growth, that if, if it's a fundamental value, and and um, you know. If it's a vision of the organisation, if growth is central, um, that means that we always have to be asking ourselves the question, then what's next for me? If growth is fundamental to the life of the kingdom, which it is, we have to ask ourselves as people who faithfully carry the kingdom, what's next for me? How am I growing? And all growth for our, our church across every location, every service and every team, every life group, all growth comes first from the growth that's occurring in us, in you and me. That's where the growth has to begin. Um, and the thing is, if we choose not to grow, it's not really, it doesn't only have an effect on us. If we choose not to grow, we actually make a decision uh, on behalf of other people <laughs> because we've actually been entrusted to lead people. And so when we choose not to grow, uh, we actually make that decision for everything and everyone that God's entrusted to us. And so it's really important we consider the decisions we make when it comes to growth. You know, will we grow? Uh, if we say no, then we're actually saying no for all the things that God's entrusted to us and all the people that God's entrusted to us. And I don't want that for the people that God's entrusted to me. I, I want to make sure that there's plenty of room for the people in my world to be growing and that I'm not the one saying, oh, no, look, I think I've reached as much as I can reach, done as far as I can, you know, done as much as I can do. You know, I've read as much as I can read. I've studied as much as I can study. I've met as many people as I want to meet. I've, you know, built as much as I want to build. That's just not what I want to do or how I want to be. I want to be the kind of person that's always making room for everyone and everything in my world to be growing, you know, around me. And that's what I want our heart to be as an as a organisation. So 
this is what I want us to do. I want us to see ourselves stepping into the next level of leadership that God has for Beyond Church. And I want to give us, I want to give us two practical principles that make room for real growth in our lives. This is really simple, really practical. Um, but I've found that this is these couple of things, they do, they're kind of like the fundamental things that we have to have in place to make sure there's um, a perpetual, um, a perpetual uh, making room kind of process that's happening in our life. And the first one is calling. And I talk about this all the time. It's about knowing who you are. The first thing that we have to apply is the is the principle of calling, which is knowing who we are. Uh, you know, we really need to get comfortable with the idea that God wants to do great things through us. Like we just have to be okay with that, that God's not going to do great things uh, outside of you. In fact, it's the only way he will ever do anything in our world today. It's through his people. That's, that's the method. <laughs> There's, that's the way God's chosen it to happen. You might disagree with it and you might think to yourself, well, God probably should have just done it himself. Well, God says, well, I'm doing myself and the way I do it is through you. And so you just have to get comfortable with the fact that God wants to do something great through you. Uh, until you can be okay with that, you, you, you're holding back the potential that God wants to release through your life for other people. And it's selfishness, really. Um, you've just got to be okay with it, that God wants to use you for great things. Um, you just have to make a decision that that's what I'm going to believe because it's, it's unfair on everyone else in your, in your world to be, you know, have false humility about it. You've just got to be big enough to be able to say, yeah, look, I'm going to be the person that God does something miraculous through, something significant through, something great through. Uh, it's not about me. It's about the people in my world that he's entrusted to me. And so, um, you know, Ephesians chapter 1, verse 22, one of my favourite verses that talks about um, you know, the power of God, the the plan of um, Jesus in the world and the church. And it says, God's put all things under the authority of Christ and has made him the head over all things for the benefit of the church. That's you and me. So all power and all authority has been delegated to the local church. And so that's just his method now. It's, it's actually up to us to be okay with him using us to do his stuff in the world. And you just got to be okay with that. Um, it's his only, it's his one and only rescue plan for humanity, the local church, that's you and me. And so we just have to be comfortable with the idea that God wants to see us growing into that identity, into the identity of, um, you know, our next step, the next significant thing that he wants us to do. So calling, um, I just wanted to, so let me just say on calling before I move on to the final one, uh, to be called, you have to be listening. So to, to hear the call of God, you've got to be listening for it. So I just want to, I guess, show you where you hear those, you hear the call of God from and who, who are you listening to at the moment. So one thing you can do to hear the call of God on your life is, first, is you can firstly, you can speak to yourself. Uh, you can actually hear God speaking through you. If, if you don't believe that, then you're wasting everyone else's time. If you don't believe that God speaks through you for yourself, how is he going to speak through you for other people? So you need to sort of get over the fact that, you know, why would God use me? Why would God do that? Blah, blah, blah. God wants to use you. He's chosen you. He's speaking through you. And sometimes he speaks through you to yourself. So, you know, we as a church have got a, a whole uh, program on doing words to live by. You guys are all, are all aware of words to live by. Um, and that's something that you should be doing every day or every, you know, whenever you've, you know, have scheduled in your time to do that, which is making sure um, that you're speaking God's words into your life. Well, here, here I want to challenge you on your words to live by. I know some of, the, some of you do this. I want you to go back to your words to live by if you do them, have a reread of them, and I want you to make sure that you include words in your words to live by that speak to the bigness of your destiny, all right? I know that you often use words to live by to sometimes counteract negative thoughts that come into your mind, but I want you to do that. But I also want you to think about what's next. I want you to think about the bigness and the destiny that God has on your life. And I want you to prophetically speak into that yourself and write it down. You know, what are the big things that God's calling you into and say them over your life on a regular basis. So if you're going to be called, you're going to have to hear, you're going to have to listen to what God's saying. And sometimes he wants to speak through you. Number two, um, we need to let the Bible speak to us as well. And the Bible has got a lot to say uh, about uh, our relationship with God, our response to God, um, what, he, what he thinks of us, how he wants us to um, uh, treat other people. So let the Bible speak to you. It'll help you to step into what's next for your life. And 
you've got to let the Bible sometimes challenge you and be okay with the fact that the Bible is going to say stuff that you don't like. It's going to reveal stuff about you you don't like, um, but you've got to be okay with that. You've got to let it break certain parts of you that need to be broken and you've got to let it rebuild the parts of you that need to be rebuilt. So let the Bible speak to you. And thirdly, so speak to yourself, let the Bible speak to you. And thirdly, uh, listen to the prophetic voices of your leaders, your mentors, your pastors, those people who are in your world that are further ahead than you, that have got your best interests at heart, that know you and that are calling you into the next thing that God has for you. You, you have to, you know, be vulnerable with those people and allow them to speak the God destiny that they see in you over your life. It's why God uses each other, you know, us as each other to bring the best out of it, uh, each other. So there's a reason you've got the people in your life that, that, that are there. And if you're struggling with that, you, you might need to find some people that speak life into you and can encourage the best out of you if you don't have that already. So make sure, you know, you guard your heart um, from the voices that are only interested in keeping you restricted. So you want to be opening your heart to the voices that want to lift the restrictions over your life and help you to move into what's next. So that's calling. Um, yeah, I mean, I talk a lot about calling. I'm really passionate about it. I just think it's what sustains us, you know, through times when it's like, what am I doing? How, why am I here? You've got to know who you are. You've got to hear the voice of God for your life. So whatever it takes, you need to do that. And as we move into what's next for Beyond Church, it's going to be more important than ever, you know, because I do think we're going to be moving into... Uh, into arenas and spheres of, um, you know, community engagement and, um, you know, arenas of life that we have never been in before. And so we've got to be okay with being big people that are confident in who we are in God so that we can engage at that level. Um, you know, that's going to be really important. Uh, calling and secondly, finally, is capacity. I talk about this a lot too, increasing our capacity, which is really just making room for more and creating margin and this is something practical I want us to do this week is to, you know, we should be using our schedule to build our future, not just record our, our time. Sometimes we use our schedule just to record the time of day. Like it's like, I'm doing this, this today at this time. I'm going to be here, here, here. And we just fill up our whole, whole schedule with the stuff that we do or, you know, we just record the behaviours that we, that we have. And I, I don't think that's what schedule should be for. I'm a big fan of schedules being, uh, you know, a, Again, a prophetic tool, a, a destiny creator, um, building your future. And, and you put time in there where you are spending time on the, the what's next of your life. To, um, and that's capacity building. Because what you're doing is you're creating margin for something new. So, so, whatever you, so this week, this is my challenge, right? Very practical. Just make the decision and take the action to make room in your schedule for more. Right. So whatever you're currently doing, we have whatever hours of the week you've currently got scheduled to get all your stuff done. Uh, you either need to say no to something to make room for more uh, or you need to do what you're doing more efficiently to make room for more. And I'm going to I'm going to give us a thought on how we can do that. But make a decision this week that you're going to be the person that uses your schedule to build your future, not just record um, your behaviours. Let's, let's make a decision this week. So, it, and how much time? I mean, I think you probably need to leave at least, you know, make a four hour window for you to sit down and start thinking, dreaming, praying about what's next. Because if the ask comes of you, oh, look, I really need you to step up to this opportunity. You've already got the time. You've got time waiting. You know, you shouldn't see that as a waste. Margin is never a waste. Margin is a yes waiting to happen. So it needs to be there. If you already are at your limit, you are not just holding yourself back. You are holding every other person back that God wants to use you to reach. So you just can't do that. You have to have margin. So how do we do it? Where do I get all the time from? Where do I get more time? Because my time is already full. Great question. Pleased you asked. <laughs> what? It's very loud. <laughs> ah, here we go. Oh, this, is, this is true, right? Maximising our capacity is always a question of who, not what. Maximising capacity, maximising your capacity is always a question of who, not what. Because you, and I heard this shared this week, someone else was talking and they were talking about capacity. It just really stuck out in my mind. I've got to write that down. Uh, you running at 100% is nowhere near as effective or efficient as you running at 70% and empowering someone else in your world for them to run at 
you running at 100% is a lot less efficient and a lot less effective than empowering someone in your world to do their 70%, allowing you to run at 70%. See, they're running with you and they're running at their um, capacity. You're running at yours. That there's an exponential increase in output if you can do that. There's an extra, you know, it's, it's, it's phenomenal. If you just invite someone else to partner with you, to journey with you, to support you and do something that you were doing, to empower them to step up into what God's got for them, then you're going to be more efficient. They're going to be more efficient and you're going to exponentially increase your output. So something really practical. So who? So that's the question I want us to answer this week. Not what do I need to do to make more room? What do I need to do to give myself more time? But who do I need to empower to help me do what I've been called to do? Who can I, who can I empower? Who can I invite to step up, to what, step up and into what God's got on their life? How can I help them to see that it's time for them to lift the restrictions that they've got on their life? How can I help them see it's time for them to step into what's next for them? And you'll be surprised at how many people will be honoured, inspired, encouraged to receive it, an, an invite from you. Because remember who you are. That's right. You are, you are called by God to move the kingdom forward and you have every spiritual blessing given to you to do all that God has called you to do. And you, are, you have never been better positioned. And you are, you're, never, you're never going to be more inspirational than you are right now. The fact that you are where you are, that you're doing what you're doing, that as an organisation we've, we've come so far so well, you have to understand that you are an inspirational leader already in this moment. You are extraordinarily inspirational. And for you to invite someone to serve with you and to step into this journey with you, they will be honoured, they will be inspired, they'll, they will be encouraged and they will, they will just... They will, like they will move with you like you, you didn't, you would never have expected. So this week, um, a few practical takeaways. Um, words to live by, have a look at that. Give that a bit of a shuffle around. Make sure it's speaking uh, into your prophetic destiny. Uh, the other thing is to, um, in terms of capacity, um, you look at your schedule, make room for more, make room for margin. And that way, if someone asks you to step into a new opportunity, you can say yes, you haven't got to think about it. And to do that, have a think about who you could invite to help you do the things that you're doing to so you haven't got to run at 100 percent. you can wind back a little bit and you can empower someone else to step into their god destiny as well so they're just a few thoughts i'm excited about the future for beyond church i can't believe like how well we've just you know come through this season it's amazing so you guys should all be pretty encouraged by how it's standing